Hello, good evening. Hi, teacher. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Great. How are you? Nice um, to see you. Nice again. to see you again. Yeah, yeah I, know I know that. that. We've, been, We've waiting been waiting a long, long time. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. A month? Yeah, a lot of fun. But we're here. Oh, That's we're here. Thing. Yeah, we're here. Welcome to the Welcome class. To the class. Thank you. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Thank you. Okay, we're going to wait just a few minutes to start. Good evening, good evening Jose Marcos.
Good evening, teacher. Long time not see you. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Yes. Thank it's you, been thank you. a while we've been waiting for, for this to start, but the good thing is that we are here back in business. Yeah, that's right. So I'm so excited for that. Very good. So yeah, let's wait just one more minute and we're gonna start on it. Excellent teacher. Good, good. Buenas noches, eh, facilitador, encende el audio. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Very well. Okay, so welcome to this module that is the advanced two. It, it's been a while, right? So we've been mm. waiting for this <laughs> a long time. Actually, I thought that you were with other other teacher and that I was going to teach another group. But here we are, which is very good. We know each other and uh, I know we've been waiting for this a long, long time. So it's very good to see you again. We're going to check if we have new people here in the, in the group. Okay, so the first, first thing that we will do is to check a video here. Let me just check here. This is the one. This is something that we must see on the very first class every time. I, I believe that you have seen this a long, a lot of time, but let's let's give it a shot, okay? El Insaforp ha trabajado con un alto nivel de profesionalismo, pensando siempre en incrementar las posibilidades de crecimiento para la gente de nuestro país. Nos hemos dedicado a que a través de la formación se generen oportunidades para los salvadoreños y así cada vez más en un mundo más competitivo y globalizado, siempre existan en nuestro país posibilidades de superación para todos. Miles de hombres y mujeres han logrado desarrollarse profesionalmente y han ampliado sus conocimientos y posibilidades laborales a través de los diferentes programas de formación que son parte del sistema de formación profesional, el cual ofrece programas de formación para todos los niveles de recurso humano dentro de una empresa. Se ha incrementado productividad de muchas industrias y cientos de empresas a través de la capacitación y formación de cientos de miles de salvadoreños con programas como Área Técnica, ofreciendo cursos técnicos para mejorar el desempeño operativo y tecnológico de los trabajadores. Competencias Gerenciales, con temas de capacitación para complementar y actualizar conocimientos para áreas de gerencia. Inglés para el Trabajo. Contenidos estandarizados del inglés para hacer a los trabajadores más eficientes y productivos en el desempeño de sus funciones. Mejora de competitividad de las MIPES. Amplios temas de capacitación, específicos para micro y pequeños empresarios. Cursos cerrados y abiertos. Tratando temas de capacitación para trabajadores de las empresas cotizantes de Insaforp. Insaforp Online. Cursos online, con el horario y ubicación que más convenga al usuario para la constante capacitación en múltiples temas y profesiones. Trabajando con el compromiso claro de ayudar al desarrollo del país y con un equipo profesional entregado a buscar oportunidades para nuestra gente, es que Insafor ha logrado tener un modelo de gobernanza y gestión ejemplar que tiene como base el diálogo permanente entre el sector empleador, laboral y el gobierno. 
formando a los trabajadores, capacitando a la gente de nuestro país, es que transformamos la vida de las familias salvadoreñas. Porque en Insafor trabajamos todos los días sabiendo que, a través del conocimiento, es que estamos formando un mejor El Salvador. Con el objetivo de formar en igualdad el Instituto Salvadoreño de Formación Profesional INSAFOR, presentó en el año 2017 la Guía para la Prevención y Erradicación de la Discriminación contra las Mujeres en los Centros de Formación Fijos, donde se desarrollan programas permanentes de formación profesional del INSAFOR, cuya elaboración contó con el apoyo de la Organización Internacional del Trabajo, OIT, y su objetivo a largo plazo es contribuir a mejorar las condiciones y oportunidades de acceso y permanencia de las mujeres en los procesos de formación profesional sin discriminación de ningún tipo. La guía pretende poner a disposición de Insafor y de sus centros colaboradores un instrumento que les permita identificar, conocer, prevenir, atender y erradicar progresivamente cualquier discriminación por razones de género contra las mujeres. Posteriormente, el INSAFOR desarrolló un plan piloto de implementación de la guía en tres centros de formación fijos, y es así como surgen cuatro instrumentos fundamentales para la aplicabilidad de la guía, siendo estos manual de convivencia, protocolo de atención en casos de bullying y acoso sexual, lineamientos para la comunicación de los programas de formación con lenguaje inclusivo no sexista, y la guía metodológica para la prevención y erradicación de la discriminación contra las mujeres. Dichos documentos fueron elaborados con el enfoque de derechos humanos y de género, estableciendo medidas que garanticen relaciones de respeto, igualdad y equidad entre todas las personas que forman parte y conviven en los centros de formación profesional. De esta forma el INSAFOR asume la igualdad de género como un principio transversal de trabajo, entregando a los centros de formación estas cuatro herramientas que complementan la guía para la prevención y erradicación de la discriminación contra las mujeres, a fin de que sean puestas en práctica en beneficio de las usuarias de la formación profesional. INSAFOR, formando en igualdad. Uh, ok, so, what do you think about this little video? Following the line, the same line or, or the same guidance as the society is walking nowadays, I would say. Yeah. And mm, that empowering women, all stuff like that. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, there are lots of courses actually. Have you ever gotten any other course on Instagram or, or only English? No. In my case, no, I haven't. I don't know if my colleagues, they have been involved in another one. No, but because this is the one online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anybody else has gotten any other course from Instagram? No, in my, in my case, only this one. Okay, only English. Yeah. Yeah, they have a lot, you know, maybe sometime whenever you finish this one, because I know that time is mm -hmm. something very important, right? We don't have a lot of time. We have the work, we have the family and many other things. We have so, to sleep too. <laughs> yeah, we need to have time for ourselves. So, but definitely in the future, if you have the chance, it's a good idea. Yeah. You can learn, I mean, a lot of things. Programming, a lot of things is huge. And the good thing is that it's for free, so. We need to take advantage. Okay, so this is advanced uh, number two. This is the uh, presentation we're going to be checking today. And uh, well, some requirements. You know this already, but we must, you know, like the survey at the end from Instafort is a must. So we need to check into that. Uh, what we can do is to check how can we translate into, into English this one, the other way around. So some requirements. You know already that your name has to be full your full name in the there on the screen in zoom okay uh, we don't have listeners i guess so we don't have to take in consideration the second bullet point then the camera has to be on through all the session that is a must from in support remember that is a must um, minimize the sound uh, when you are not 
providing any feedback or participating in the class that is important. Active participation, actually in this module, we need to participate more, right? And this one, we are going to speak more than in the other ones, even in, than the other one that we have together. So do you guys have any questions about the first part, the requirements? Clear. Clear as chat, as we say. Mm -hmm. Okay, then uh, you know that the attendance must be at 100%. Uh, the attendance is taken three times, you know, at the beginning, uh, that is around eight at nine and before finishing, that is nine and five, 55. And then you just, well, you know, that you have to say present or here I am or whatsoever. And then uh, we are going to have one-on-ones uh, at the end of the class. So if you want to discuss, if you want to ask questions about anything, not only about the course, but about anything, any grammar that you have seen in the past, anything that you would like to know, or if you just want to, to practice, that is the moment, okay? So that is the 10 minutes after the 10 o'clock. And there are no permissions. We were discussing that the last class. Um, sometimes uh, some students, they text me and they say, you know, I have a problem. And I say, yes, of course, I understand. but. Insofar does not grant any permission. I can say, okay, I understand because I understand, but they are the ones who do not grant any permission. So please remember that one. Any questions on this slide? Not the chart. No, Very good. You know this already, but anyways, we need to check. So we need to get 80% of the homeworks and evaluation and platform for, for you to move to the other. Okay, so I have a first question for you. So does everybody have access to the platform already? Yes, I uh, already got into it and I got it. I don't know the rest. Does anybody's missing still? Somebody has uh, no access? <clears throat> huh? I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> so, uh, no, and right now I'm going to try. Yeah, give it a shot and before the class finishes, let me know if somebody uh, does not have the access to the platform, if there is a problem, let me know so I can report so we can start with the right foot, right? So we can move on in a very nice way. So of course the homeworks are there in the platform and uh, we remember that we need to do them after the class. For the second week, remember that we have like two in one, so it's not going to be every Every night, sometimes it's one night and you rest, and then two nights and you rest and something. And then for the 23rd of September, we need to finish the middle test, okay? And uh, the final test, we will be finishing according to the programming on Monday, October 10th. This is because remember that on September the 15th, we're not going to have classes because it's a holiday. So you can go in and see the, the parades on the street and then go home and sleep if you want. Or if you are not working, of course, because I am working. Okay, the manual is already there in the platform. Also there in the group is already for you to download it if you want. You can print it. There are not many exercises there, but anyways, if you want to print it or if you want to print some of the pages, that is a good idea for you to just write on it. Richard, I'm sorry to interrupt you uh, later. Maybe if you can present it in the chat group because I just uh, joined in the group today. In Very the, good. Maybe if you can join the, the, the manual in the WhatsApp group, that will be more. It will be a pleasure. Mm -hmm. I will return Thank that you. today so you can download it, check it. Uh, as Since we are in the advanced level, here is more talking than exercise. Mm -hmm. But anyways, uh, this module, I will try to provide you more insight okay. about this, okay? Thank you. Good. Um, the, do you have any questions about this part? No question. Good. So no let's question. move to the next. For the Zoom part, remember that we need to mute. Uh, just when you're not providing any opinion or talking about the class. The camera has to be on, 
Remember that that is a must from and so forth. Uh, also, you have the chat there. Remember that you also can chat with me directly in WhatsApp or in the group. So if you want, you can just do it there, right? And uh, sometimes we will be using breakout rooms and you can raise your hand. So if you have questions or if you want to participate or say anything, of course, it will be a pleasure to listen to you. And this is the platform, okay? This is the class we are recording right now. Uh, the uh, name of this class is Verbs followed by Gerunds. And uh, well, it's not there, the class, because we're recording. And there is the first question. And this is a question that everybody wants to tell me. I, I remember that we discussed something like that in the beginning of the first advanced level. But why are you learning English? I mean, what motivates you to move on? I know it's, uh, it's difficult. I know that you've been doing a big sacrifice. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people, they start the English classes, but just a few, like in the university, just a few finish. And you are just a few months to finish this one. So that says a lot about the, what you want to achieve, what you want to do. The question is, why are you learning English? So that is the question for for the class of today. But anyways, if you want to share with the class right now, it will be good to listen to you. Remember that the advance it will be for you to speak. Some classes I won't speak at all. You will be the ones. So anybody wants to share why are you learning English? Well, in my case, it's because uh... Uh, to grow like professionals and also I use daily to communicate with my co-workers because if I don't speak English they don't understand because they only speak English and Hindi that's it okay very good perfect thank you yeah and any other any other person wants to share well it, I, it, I'm sorry <laughs> no, no go on okay thank you Liana hi by the way <laughs> Hi. Okay. Well, in my case, the same as Jose Wilfredo. You just don't imagine, teacher. It is funny, but it's like a, something we always run the, at the end of every course because with Jose Wilfredo and Jose Ayala, we work for the same company. We are not colleagues in the same account. In fact, I guess we don't know each other in person, right, guys? But Oh, we need, we run every end of every course in order to, uh, for this guy, following this guy from HR department to send the information and every, in every course, something funny happens. But at the end, we celebrate when we achieve the goal that he finally sent out our information. In my case, last, the experience I had with uh, advanced first uh, course uh, I love it because that is mostly what you need to do in a in an interview and I had the opportunity to help two of my colleagues that they were removed they felt like uh, they they felt like down but I was explaining to them that in order to continue and they had the opportunity to apply for another another account and in fact, that was the, the change, but they need to uh, have an interview. And I was giving to them all those tips and secrets we learned. They were uh, thinking, how can I say? They were uh, agradecidos, great, great, grateful. Grateful, ah, okay. They were grateful at the end because uh, it's like I told you in the last course, if we knew all these things before, oh my God, every interview will be will be different. So in my case, I've been learning a lot. And the way how I am um, um, performing, let's say in that, in that way, in my job, now I sell more in English. And before taking these courses, since last year, I was working in a call center, but I was afraid to have a long conversation with someone. And now 
that is gone. That 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 is gone. And in in my case, I've been improving a lot. And thank you for that. Very good. Nice. Nice to hear that one. And yes, you know, when I speak with you, I can see. Maybe you don't see it, but mm -mm. day by day, <laughs> week by week, I can see that you're improving. So that is very good. Nice. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you for your comments. Anybody else? Ziliana was going to say something. Yeah. Well, I think, teacher, that nowadays, maybe no English is a must. And because maybe sometimes uh, uh, there are a lot of opportunities, but uh, you can miss that opportunities if you can talk English. So in my case, I want to learn English because maybe in the future I want to get a better job or a better position in my company. So that. Okay, perfect. Thank you Anna, for your comments. Very good. And that is true. Um, well, in my experience, you know, I always say this in the classes. Um, I have a mayor, I have a business administration mayor and I have a master, but the one that has opened a lot of doors for me has been English. English is amazing. I mean, if you speak very well English, if you speak with other people, they understand you and you are able to communicate yourself. That is amazing and opens a lot of things for a lot of, I mean, not only for, for your job. I mean, maybe that is one of the most important because what you want to do is to maybe move to other country or get a better job, but just to enjoy movies in English is amazing. Or to listen to music and understand and, or read a book in English, I mean, opens a different world. So that is amazing, very good. Anybody else wants to share? Um, in my case, for example, teacher, uh, I think that is, uh, as Elena said, is, is a must. And in this um, world, this current world, uh, it's important to understand very well the English because if we travel, for example, to another country, that is the um, a standard language or the general language. So I think it's a requirement uh, to to travel, to go to other countries and communicate with with other cultures. So it's a it's like um, an open door. Uh, so I think it must be a, a obligation for for us, uh, even um, or us if we have the tools, the facilities to understand, to to learn in uh, online and with the with the commodity of, of our homes. So. I think we should be make an effort. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Marcus. And that is so true. I mean, even if you go to countries that they do not speak English as the native language, if you move, I mean, if you go to France, if you go to Portugal, anywhere, I mean, English is going to be the main language and it's going to allow you to an understanding things. Good. In my case, um I think English, um, the English language is the first step for many things. Things is, is the base, um, the basis uh, for a lot of things. First, um, all the, the best knowledge in any kind of thing or any uh, matter, I don't know, uh, is in English. If you want to listen a good tell talk is in English. If you want to read a good book is in English. If you want to read a good article is in English, a good paper, I don't know, something from HBR or Harvard Business Review is in English, right? I don't know, many things is in English, very, a lot of things very, with very te technicians, I don't know, is in English. So if you uh, want to move on or move forward, you have to 
learn English. <laughs> Definitely. So that is true. I mean, the latest news, the most recent, the most advanced pieces of information are going to be in English. Definitely. Uh, it's very rare that it's going to be in another language, but yeah. And if it's in another language, of course, very soon it's going to be available in English. So it's a very good thing for us to, to learn English. Good, good. Any other person wants to comment? Okay, so I want to congratulate you because you are still here. Um, maybe if you remember the very first time that you came to an English course with a lot of people, maybe just one or two are here, right? The rest of the people, they are in the middle, maybe because of many reasons, because of the job, because they got married, because they got children, they got a new job and it's more demanding, many reasons. But you are still here, even when you have a lot of things to do with your family, with your friends, with the work, you're still here. So that is very good. And your English level is of course very, very good. So let's get a little bit better every day. So remember also that for tonight, we have to finish this homework. That is uh, the correct option. There are only five, very, very easy. Okay. And before we move on, we're going to check the attendance, of course. So let me just check here. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Yeah, she was as a listener, she said, okay. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Danny Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Very good. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Okay. Maria Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramon Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good. Okay, my friends, welcome again to this new course. We are not going to introduce ourselves because there is only one person that is new, but she's still not here. Maria Alejandra, did I say your name? Ah, uh, yeah, right. Yes. I can see here. Ah, uh, here comes Roxana, my cousin. Hello, Roxanne. Hi. Good evening. How are you? I'm just fine, thank you. What about you? Here, surviving. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I really feel that. <laughs> yeah, but, well, the good thing is that we're here, and uh, I, w I was missing the classes, to be honest with you, because it's a good yeah, thing. Good thing isn't it? Yeah, I know it's tired, and maybe at, at 10 tonight, we're going to be like, my goodness, I want to go home. <laughs> but but for for Wednesday we are going to get used to that again. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, yeah. Very good. So the topic for today says verbs followed by gerunds. I'm going to show you here the screen. Okay. And here is it. Let's see. Suleima Ivan, could you please help me reading that paragraph? Okay. Um, the gerund is commonly used after quite a few different verbs. The most important of these verbs are shown below. 
All of these verbs can be followed by noun instead of gerunds. Remember, gerunds always function as noun in sentences. Some of these verbs can also be followed by a that clause, the verb that require additional usage explanation are displayed as links which lead to more detailed pages. Very good. So the first question I have for everybody is, what is a gerund? That verbs that end with I, I and G. Very good. Those verbs are the gerunds. So it says the most important of these verbs are shown below. We're going to check, of course, those verbs. And all those verbs can be followed by nouns instead of gerunds. So in this case, when we're using this one, the gerund is going to be like a noun. Not like an action, but like a noun. Like when we say, I like to go swimming, right? In that sentence, swimming is not an action, it's a noun. So that is different from Spanish. You know this already, but of course, we need to check into more specific grammar, okay? And also it says some of these verbs can also be followed by a that clause. What is a that clause? Anybody remembers? Um, I remember that we used that, but when we were working with the reporting speech. Yeah, reporting speech is one of those. Yeah, that you can use a that clause. Remember that for first of all, a clause is when you put together two ideas. Sometimes they okay. are one is dependent and the other is independent. Sometimes both are independent. Sometimes they are similar and we use words to get together those ones like and, like but. And that is one of the most common, the that clauses. Of course, we're gonna check into that one, right? So okay. that is just to check if you remember. So these are verbs which can be followed by nouns or gerunds. For example, avoid, dislike, forgive, postpone, celebrate, dread, involved, prevent, consider, enjoy, keep, present, contemplate, entail, loathe, resist, defer, escape, mind, risk, delay, excuse, miss, save, detest, finish, pardon, and stop. Those verbs can be followed by nouns or gerunds. Remember that one of the most important part in this kind of advanced grammar is that we need to remember when. I mean, it's not that we can use gerunds with all the verbs. It's not possible. It's possible to use it with a lot, but not with all the verbs. So we need to remember which verbs can we use with gerunds. And there are some examples below. I avoid going to the dentist. So in that case, avoid is the main verb and going is like the activity, going to the dentist. I avoid chocolate, that is a noun. So chocolate and going both are nouns in this one. I miss taking walks in the morning, okay? So the main verb here is miss. I miss England, okay? It's kind of the same. I have finished working uh, and I have finished the cake, okay? so. You can see there that also we can use the verb in different tenses. For example, the last one says, I have finished working. So I have finished is going to be like the main verb with the auxiliary, of course. Working is the other part, that is the gerund. So we can use this with gerunds in any tense, in past, in simple present, in present perfect, past perfect, whatsoever, okay? So, that is it. I mean, it's kind of easy. Maybe what we need to remember is which verbs can we use. Sometimes it may sound like like awkward, like not like strange. For example, I avoid going to the dentist. I don't know if you feel it nice or if you feel it like strange. 
uh, I miss taking walks in the morning. Do you feel it like uh, in a normal way or do you feel it strange? How do you feel it? So all these verbs, we can use them with nouns or gerunds, right? Avoid, for example, dislike. I dislike ice cream, for example. Or I can say I dislike going eating. or eating. I dislike eating after taking a nap, for example. So... I'm sorry, and I have a question. Uh, are these the only ones that can be used or, or this is something like the regular and irregular bird that there is a, there is a long list? Uh, well, there is a list. It's mm. not that long. It's mm. not for all the verbs. These are like maybe the most common. Actually, that's why I, I have here another. Well, we have more verbs in the other slide and also a, a website that we're going to check so we ah, can okay. check it out. Okay. So this is like the first approach. But maybe the first thing that we need to, to get is that it has to be normal for us to say, for example, I forgive any gerund. I prevent any gerund. That is normal. It, it's good. It's not uh, incorrect. Okay. So we need to, we need to, maybe some of these verbs are more common than other. I mean, avoid is very common, uh, but maybe uh, contemplate is something that we don't use in a very common conversation, right? Or what else? Um, mine is very common. Resist is very common. Resent maybe is not that common. So maybe that is where we might find it a little bit strange with verbs that we don't use very common. But there are some other verbs that you can use in a very common conversation. And you, you use some verbs more than other verbs. So we need to remember. And remember that it says can be followed. This is not a rule that we're going to use this only with gerunds. Can be followed by nouns or gerunds. Okay. Looking at this, I, I have a question with the using risk. What will, how would be the best way? For example, if I want to say the risk of mistaking or the risk mistaking the process, how can it come? Okay, that depends on the context. And that way it has to be the risk of mistaking. Um, that would be the best way. But if you say, for example, I have risked going to the mountain, mm -hmm. that, that is different, right? So remember that that verb can be used in different contexts and different aspects. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. So that is the thing. That is not a rule that always after this verb, we're going to use gerund. Exactly. We can use it with a gerund, but there are some verbs that we cannot use with a gerund. It's easier for us to, to learn which verbs can we use with gerund and try to use them in that way. So in the future, whenever we go to New York, remember, we will be able to, to speak in a very clear way with other people. Mm -hmm. This is one of my biggest concerns. This is one of my pains because having conversation with uh, the client for the account, we have a general uh, meeting sometimes. They talk a lot, they use a lot gerunds and, and that was... Uh -huh, something that I always have the doubt how they go. Said, so but okay, now it's clear. Very good. Yeah, actually, the the gerunds are very common words. Maybe the one thing that you learned before is that it's not always the verb, right? It may be a, a noun. So this is the situation where we can use this kind of uh, gerunds with other verbs. It's like mm -hmm. a, a combination. Okay. Okay, so let's practice a little bit. This is what we're gonna do. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask one of you, what is the meaning of the first verb? And then you are going to tell me an example with a void and try to use 
Okay, you can use a gerund or you can use a noun. Any of those. It's not always a good idea to use a gerund. So that's why we're going to use either a noun or a gerund. Do you understand what we're going to do? Let's give it a shot. Okay, I'm going to start with Giselle. Okay, so Giselle is going to tell everybody what is a void, of course, in English. How do you explain a void? You can check in the dictionary if you don't know. Uh, remember that here we are here to practice English. So if you, uh, the most important here is for us to, to practice. So what is a void? How do you explain that verb? And then an example, using a void and a noun or a gerund. A void. I know the meaning of a boy, but if I have to explain, um, a boy is when you try to. Um, maybe to. I'm going to check it in the dictionary because I know what is a boy, but I don't know how to say it. Definitely. Check it out. Because I can't say it. it's when you try to avoid something. It's like. Oh, yeah, I mean, actually, that makes sense for everybody, I guess. Yeah, if, uh -huh. that sounds uh, a little bit obvious. I don't know. Keep away from or stop oneself from doing something. That is it. So avoid is when you don't want to do something, when you stop yourself from doing something. Very good. Uh, now you are going to tell us an example with mm. a void and a noun or a germ. There is an example below, so you have an idea. For example, I avoid going to the dentist, that is good, or I, I avoid chocolate. Both are good. You can use any of those. I mean, all that example with any of those structures. I try to avoid, I don't know how to say this word. Uh, I try to avoid soda, for example. Okay, that is with a noun. Very good. I try to avoid soda. Me too. I don't like soda that much. Very good. Ah, but you like it, right? I remember that you are a huge yeah, fan of I, I, I try to avoid it. So, how many how many sodas do you drink in a week? Uh, now maybe before I used to drink maybe a soda per day, but now maybe just weekends. Okay, that is yeah. a good thing. Yeah, it's a very progress. good. A progress. Yeah, congratulations! You are on your way. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Thank you. So you see, it's very easy. She explained the verb and she provided an example, this time with a noun. You can use a noun or a gerund, depending on what you want to say. So Heidi told me she wanted to be the next. Hello, Heidi. Nice to be with you again. Okay. So dislike. What is dislike? Like? Dislike is something you don't like, right? Very good, that is it. An example with dislike and this grammar we're checking. I dislike waking up early on Sundays. Oh, I also dislike that one. Sometimes you wake up and you are not able to sleep anymore. Mm -hmm. And then you have to go and do the house, right? Do things. <laughs> <laughs> what time do you usually wake up on Sundays? At seven or eight. Seven is a good time. It's not that early. Yeah, very mm -hmm. good. Perfect. Thank you, Heidi. Nice to see, not see you, but here with you again. <laughs> Anna Claudia, hello. <laughs> hello again. <laughs> oh my God. Which okay. verb? Which is going to be forgive. Forgive. Forgive is like uh, not feeling angry for something that someone made in the past that 
maybe there was uh, something that irritates you or something that hurt your heart <laughs> or your soul, I don't know. And, and forgive is not to feel angry for that. I, I guess something like that. Mm -hmm. Very good, yeah, it's like let it go, right? It's like, let well, it, go, huh? uh -huh. it doesn't feel anything for, for that one. Good, so an example with forgive, it can be with a noun or with a gerund. Okay, sometimes I forgive birthdays. <laughs> okay. Okay, <laughs> that's that sounds interesting. Good, very well. Teacher, can I make you a question? Of course. About the usage of forgive and pardon. Ah, okay. Pardon is like more formal. Uh, it's like um, well, first of all, this word comes from the French, and uh, they use it when you say when you want, for example, to interrupt somebody that is speaking. You can say, "Pardon mm -hmm. me. Wait a little moment." You don't use forgive. Forgive is like, I forgive you. You made this and I forgive you. It's not important for me. Uh, can, it, can it be said then that forgive is when you forgive and pardon is when you ask for forgiveness? No, uh, when you ask for permission could be pardon or is something, something like that. Yeah, it's like more mm -hmm. formal. It's like in a, um, the usage that we have for pardon is like when you want to yeah, interrupt is the most common. I like, excuse me? Excuse pardon. me. Huh? Mm -hmm. ah, pardon is more, more similar to excuse me, actually. Mm -hmm. It's like more into that line instead of... Not forgive. like in Spanish, right? Like, no, so like in Spanish. No. Is yeah. Huge. The, <laughs> the root of the word, in I mean, is the same. For the French, pardon is, I mean, when you are speaking French, you say pardon me. And that is forgive me, but not in English. In English, it's different. Mm. Okay. Good. Perfect. The next one is going to be Danny. For Danny is postpone. Okay. Postpone. Um, when you delay something. Very good. When you are like thinking, I'm going to do this tomorrow. And tomorrow you say, I'm going to do it tomorrow. And so yeah. on. Right. Very good. An example with postpone. Mm, I postpone my alarms in the morning. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> Is that so? Is this something that you do? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. very good. I never do that one because I believe that if I do that one, I, I won't get up. But no, I I have a second one or a third one that I thought I uh, just in case. So I don't. Okay. <laughs> I don't <worry> about <laughs> Very good, thank you, Danny. Very good, the next one is going to be for Jose Wilfredo. And the word for you, the verb for you is celebrate. Celebrate. Celebrate, that's mean like uh, make a party of something or maybe make a, a dinner or something, uh, a goal that is achieved. Very good. Yeah, like I'm making like I'm making a party or something that you achieve that is a celebration, right? Very good. An example would celebrate in a noun or a gerund. In a noun. I celebrate the wedding. Okay. I celebrate the wedding. Very good. That is a very good one. Okay, uh Jose mean a dread. That is for you. Hello, Osmin. Are yep, you in here? Oh, very yep. good. Okay, I was the... looking at the word, sorry. Perfect. Take your time, don't worry. Okay, so it's like once you are like afraid or something. Afraid, very good. So as you can see, this very one of the, those one that we don't use that very common, right? Uh, is there, but maybe we prefer to say, I am afraid or any other word, but we know that exists, dread. So can you please dread. tell us an example with dread in a noun or a gerund? Okay. 
to uh, so I have a question so I can use dread to like an, a noun too no uh, that is going to be a verb but you can use another verb in general as a noun so mm -hmm. as you can see the example says I avoid going so you can say avoid that is the verb and then a gerund or you can use avoid or dread let's say and a noun okay can i say it? i dread to to watch like horror movies in that case my friend has to be no, i i dread watching Watching, or of watching, movie. yeah, horror movies. So that will be better. Very good, perfect. Thanks. You are welcome. And uh, involve. Uh, that is for Roberto. Are you here with us? Not possible. Okay. Let's see, Marcus. Involve. That's the word for you. The verb. Involve. Involve, <clears throat> okay, involve, um, okay, it's like, um, um, a step forward or, uh, advance, okay, or, um, uh, involve, uh, involve, yeah, is, is that the meaning? In yeah, yeah. I mean, for example, you can use that one for uh, when you say, um, "I got involved with some friends in some trouble." Well, that that would be a good use. So, ah, involved. Uh, sorry, sorry. Involved. It's like you are, um, yeah, related to related. Let's okay. Say. Uh, I I I saw involved. Uh, no, sorry. But anyway, uh, involved. Okay, and now ball, an example. Okay. okay, okay, okay. Just let me see the ball. Yeah, in ball, in ball, okay. Perfect. Um, I in ball. Uh, I in ball. Uh, sorry. Think about it, don't worry. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know sometimes uh, it's difficult, but because we need to understand and then provide an idea that is with this one, right? In bold is right, in bold crap. Uh, in bold, I am bold with my classmate to finish the homework. Okay, very good. I involved my classmates to finish the homework. Very good. Um, Okay. I I involved in the, for example, I involved in the accident. Okay. In and, that case, yeah. you can say I, I was that, involved. In that I, case, I, it's I, different, but it's it's fine as well. Okay. Okay. Very good. Prevent. That is going to be for Teacher, Maria. Go ahead. Uh, I have a question uh, about the first sentence. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, I involved. Well, in that case, is I am. I'm involved. Oh, I okay, got I'm involved. involved. You but, can say also uh, I, got, uh -huh. I was thinking that the complement uh, was finishing. It's mm -hmm. correct because uh, he said um, to finish the to homework. Finish. Mm, finishing it could be yeah i got it um in that case you can say i involved my classmate mm -hmm. to finish my homework okay that will be that will be good i involved okay very Thank good you. perfect maria alejandra hello how are you welcome, welcome. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here with you again. So, and I know that you are very happy to tell us what is to prevent. What is to prevent? 
Um, maybe an action that you know that consequence and you try don't do. Very good. You try to avoid, right? Try, to, try avoid to avoid nothing to happen. Good. <laughs> now, <laughs> very good. You are on the right path. <laughs> so, uh, what would be a good example with prevent in a noun or a gerund? I pre I prevent um, I prevent to check my car frequently. Mm, okay, so in that oh. case is I prevent checking. I that check my car uh -huh, prevent. Exactly. That is where you need to use the gerund. I prevent checking. So if you are uh -huh. going to use another uh, verb, it's going to be in gerund. Uh -huh. Very good, perfect. Consider that is going to be for, let's see, Fernando. Welcome back, Fernando. Thank you, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. So, okay. what is consider? Consider. Consider it's evaluate a decision. Very good. When you evaluate something that you are going to make up your mind. An example with consider? I consider going to the beach next weekend. Very good. That is perfect. I consider yeah. going to the beach next weekend. Yeah, let's go together, everybody. And that would be a, a good... It would be great. Yeah, to, to be at the beach and speak English, right? <laughs> yeah. Good, perfect. Thank you, Fernando. Thanks to you. Now, Francisco, I know some verbs are uh, difficult to put a gerund next to it, but that's why we're checking also with nouns. Francisco, are you here with us? Hello, teacher. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, teacher. Very well, welcome back. I'm working. Oh yeah, me too, you know. Thank you, teacher. <laughs> okay. So uh, your is word cool. is going to be enjoy. <laughs> you... What is to enjoy? Uh, this story, uh, my, inter my internet connection is, uh, this moment is, is very bad. Uh, you can repeat me, please. Of course, I can repeat. So, enjoy. What is enjoy? What is the meaning of enjoy. that word? The meaning, okay, teacher. Enjoy. Uh, uh, like, uh, feeling well to, uh, to doing something. Very good. Feeling very well when doing something. An example of with enjoy and the gerund in a noun or a noun. Um, uh, I enjoy with, with uh, I uh, doing exercise. Okay, I enjoy making exercise or doing exercise, you can say. Very good, a gerund, very good, perfect. Thank you, Francisco. Okay, one of the most common verbs that are in this list is going to be keep. Uh, Yvonne, what is to keep? Hello, are you here with us, Yvonne? Not here. Let's go back to the very beginning. Let's see. Okay. Um, Giselle. Yes, teacher. Hello. Hello. Okay, the word for you is keep. What is to keep? Keep. Mm. Keep, what can I say? 
the meaning. Here. When you, when you try to like retain something or to, to, I don't know, to, to have that with that, that thing or that situation with, I don't know, with, it, it, it is a, 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 a thing maybe to, to, to have that thing with you or it's a situation. Or I don't know, maybe a or a person. Yeah, when you try to retain something or someone, maybe that. Very good, perfect. That is it. Now an example would keep. An example would keep. Um. I. Try to keep calm when when well, in stress situations. Okay, very good. I, I try to keep calm in stressed situations. Uh, this actually, this is a very good uh, exercise that we can do in our minds. In mind that I say, I keep to come to class. How do you feel that? I keep to come to class. It doesn't feel good, right? No, that, but that what if I say, I keep coming to class? Yeah, that sounds better in my mind. <laughs> that is exactly what we are learning today. That these verbs are going to go with gerunds, not with to and the verb. So if you say, I avoid to go, it doesn't. It doesn't feel good. Okay. I avoid going, yes. So that is exactly what we're learning. And in this verb, we can feel it, right? We can see it. So now we only need to learn the other verbs. And remember that with these verbs, we're going to use gerunds and nouns, okay? Very good. Let's check the last one in this part, and then we're going to check the tendons. Resent, that is going to be for Jose Wilfredo. Uh, sorry, teacher, could you repeat it? Of course. The word for you is resent. Resent. Mm, maybe when you already sent something and you have to send it again. Oh, that, that is interesting. Actually, that is resent with D. Resend. Resent. Uh -huh. uh, just let me check. Resent, 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 resent. And with the letter C, this should be recent, right? Recent, yeah, that's uh -huh, and the pronunciation is different. That's why uh, when we are speaking pronunciation and intonation of words is very important. Oh my God. But then what is to recent? Okay, true. when you suffer by something. Exactly, it's like resentment. Okay, the noun is resentment and the verb is resent. So it's yeah, like, I, right. I, I don't resent. feel very well. I uh, <laughs> feel like disappointed or anything. I don't know. I feel bad. Resent. Good. So what would be a good example with resent and a noun uh, or a gerund? Um, resent. I resent, let me see, I'm thinking. Wow, it's true. It's easy, imagine this, I'm gonna help you. You can say, I resent, I resent coming to my work very late. That is something like, it's like, you feel very bad because today you were late for your work. Oh man, if I had taken the other bus and not this bus, maybe I, 
I could have been gone uh, on time. Something like COVID that. Teacher, COVID teacher, I resent talking about other persons. Very good. That is a good one. Yeah, it's like you feel remorse, right? I resent uh -huh. doing something. Good. Teacher, this very resent is like in Spanish, like it's involving like uh, angry. Sometimes it might involve angry or uh, it might be like a sadness feeling or like uh -huh. like uh, angry. Yeah, something like that. Like an in, you say, um, indignation? Ind indignation? Yeah, it could be something like that. So it's like, I resent. I resent mm -hmm. believing in your lies, for example, right? <laughs> it is because, I'm asking because in Spanish, we use a lot this word, but the sense is like uh, being angry for something that someone made to me. Uh -huh. Yeah, the only difference is that in English is also, maybe in Spanish also, I mean, uh, it's, it's possible to use it against not only other people, but against me. I mean, I did something that I resent. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it's possible as well. I but resent yes. believing in you. Exactly. It's like, like that one, like, like when mm -hmm. you are in a fight with your oh. boyfriend or girlfriend, I resent believing your lies because you always tell me this. And... <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you, you can use it the next time if, you're, if you have a fight in English. I resent believing in you. You told me that this was not going to happen anymore, but here we are again. So yeah, Good that, okay. that, that will be, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I hope you don't fight, of course. But sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you cannot avoid that one, right? <laughs> Those are good advice. Yeah, <laughs> they to use the words properly, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Good. We're going to stop for a while and we're going to check the attendance because the time has come. Okay. Ada Susena Cáceres Mendoza. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Yes, teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia, <laughs> Heidi Eugenia yes. Sarguera Rivas. Yes, teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Cacha and Sonia Guadalupe Benitez de Claros. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernandez. Present. Very good. Okay, let's continue with the verbs and practicing because if you practice, you will be a master very soon. Okay. So the next one is going to be contemplate. Uh, let's see. Roxana, contemplate. Mm, let me see. Maybe contemplate is when you are in clothes, uh, different uh, ways or different situation to decide what, which is the better, which okay, is well, better. Yeah, it's like when you have options and you are contemplating mm -hmm. what will be the consequences of doing one or the other one. Yes. Good. Um, An example. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Mm, I contemplate um, finish finishing 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 English this year. Very good. That is a good one. I contemplate finishing English finishing. this mm -hmm. year. Very good. Perfect. Very well. Nice. 
The next one is until. Let's see, Maria Alejandra. Until, what is that? You can check dictionaries, you can look for the answer, of course. Okay. Mm, when you hate a uh, thing or food or like this. Yeah, when something is unavoidable, right? When something, if you do this, it's going to be, the consequences, it can be different. It's going to be this one, right? Okay, an example with entail. <laughs> I... I love they, I love they. Uh, I like that carrot or eating carrot, right? Uh, but you are using entail, right? Ah. Entail, yeah. Entail. Entail, that is below contemplate. Ah, I feel sorry. Okay. Um, I feel. Um, in a crash or accident, I feel in a. Okay. Yeah. I entail. You can say I was in tail in a car accident. Very good. <laughs> Okay, this one is the one that you were telling me, I guess. But anyways, we're gonna check with Danny. What is love? Love it is to hate something. <laughs> to hate something, yeah, that is it. It's another word for you to say, I hate you. Okay, so, but an example with loath and a noun and or a gerund? Um. I love, I love being in traffic. <laughs> oh, that is a very good because it's with a gerund. Yeah, I love being in traffic. Yeah, I believe nobody likes that one, yeah. right? It's something that we, in morning the morning that you are going to your job, it's like, oh my goodness. I mean, how is yeah. this possible? I, I will be late. <laughs> Yeah, you're thinking about all the consequences on that one, but sometimes you cannot do anything about it. Good, perfect. Uh, the next one is resist. Heidi. Uh, resist. Yep. To resist is to... To be able to hold the situation. Very good to hold on. What would be a good mm -hmm. example with resist on this? Um, I resist. I resist being awake until late at night. Okay, very good. That's a good one. Thank you very much. Uh, Differ. That is going to be for, let's see. Ana Claudia, defer. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was fighting with the mute button. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, defer. Defer? Uh, is defer. like. Defer. Defer. Mm -hmm. Defer. Defer is like um, postpone. Postpone again. Very good. Mm -hmm. Suspend. To spend, to transfer to another time something, right? Ah, okay. Uh -huh. Transfer. So okay. I can say uh, 
Eh, I differ. Differ, es verdad. Differ. I, I differ. Uh -huh. Ah, ok. I differ testing my math knowledge until 2024. <laughs> ok, that is a good one. And with a gentleman. Very good, Ana Claudia. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> nice. The other one is very easy. Escape. Marcus. Okay, um, okay. Okay. Um, for example, I've been trying to escape from the routine. Okay, very good. So that is actually an example, right? I escape. Escape is when you want to not to do something or to avoid something to happen to you. Very good. Good, the next one is mind. That is going to be for Fernando. Hi, teacher. Hello. Uh, hello. Mind. Mind. Mind is um my as a bear is um I don't know. Mind is my mind. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you know what bear. is mine as a verb? Uh, no, not really. Okay, it's like, do you care? Uh, it's important for you. Uh, for example, when I say, do you mind opening the door? Oh, well. Uh, it's, 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 uh -huh. And there, as you can see, you use a gerund. Do you mind? You don't say, do you mind to open the door? You say, do you mind opening the door, right? So you should use either a noun or a gerund. That is uh, the it's a bear. Yeah, very good. Of like. course, the words they are uh, maybe, they can be used as, as a noun or as a verb. Very good. Okay. Uh, my, for example, I do my way for the food. Waiting for the food, waiting. Oh, waiting, waiting. Yeah, it should be with Jaren all the time. Okay, because it is two bears. Because this verse, yeah, this verse cannot be used with uh, an infinite. Infinitive is like, do you remember, to go, to be. In this case, we cannot use mine with an infinitive. We have to use that with a Jaren. Do you mind going? Do you mind waiting? Do you mind opening? Any verb that is going to be after that one is going to be in general. Okay. Okay, teacher, I got it. Thank you. Very good. Juan Miguel Brand, hello, welcome. How are you? Hello, teacher. Hello, guys. I'm here and I am good. Thanks for asking. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm late because I had to. Uh, to go to my parents' house, but I'm at home right now. Very good. Okay. So welcome again to the advanced two. And you know, we're checking here about some uh, verbs that can be followed either by nouns or genus, never with a infinitive. So what we're doing is you are going to tell us what is the meaning of risk as a verb. What is risk? Um, risk, uh, maybe. When you are in a, a situation of dan danger, maybe. Okay, very good. So when you are at risk and uh, well, now you need to provide an example with risk and a noun or a gerund. Okay, I want, um, I want risk uh, the meeting of this afternoon. Uh, just for the things that you were telling to me. Okay, that is a good example. Very good, perfect. Thank you. Okay, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. The next one is delay. That is for Francisco. Hello, Francisco. Is the internet better? Not possible for Francisco, I guess. 
Uh, let's see, Jose Osmin. Yep. Hey, so what is delay? <laughs> oh, okay. Delay is postpone. To postpone in time, right? So when you are mm -hmm. like, you have to do something at night, but it's not possible. You are delayed. Very good. So an example with delay and a gerund or a noun. Okay. I delay loading my computer. Very good. I delay loading my computer with a gerund. Very good. Good. Uh, the next one is going to be excuse. That is going to be for Jose Wilfredo. Hello, Jose Wilfredo. Not possible, okay? So, let's see. Uh, Danny, excuse. It's excuse. Mm, it's like, mm, it's very similar, like forgive, right? Yeah, it's like very formal for some situations. Very formal. Excuse, yeah. uh -huh. excuse me. Say, forgive me. Uh, yeah, excuse me or right, forgive me. But, and okay. when you when you say you're sorry for something. Oh, very good. Right. When you express that you're sorry about something. Say sorry about something. But well, so I think uh, it's not so it's not so so bad the things when you say excuse me. <laughs> that is so true. That is the thing that sometimes matters, right? So excuse and forgive might be similar, but excuse is like, uh, excuse me, can I maybe use the thing? <laughs> uh -huh. But if you did something that maybe was kind of bad, you say forgive, right? please forgive. Okay, right. uh -huh. okay um, an example with excuse. Mm. Um, uh, I excuse me. It can be many mm. things. Okay. Maybe it's not that common, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm. I I I try to say um like um, when when you um, when you say sorry for um, for non don't be able to attend to something that in something that invited you when you say I <laughs> oh please excuse me for not being here. something like that I excuse for not being in your party or something like that I don't know <laughs> yeah actually mm. that is a good example I mean um I want to excuse myself for not being on time for example uh, yeah yeah oh, it's like <laughs> that very was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> very good very good Okay, the other one is Miss. And this one is going to be for Miss Giselle Canyas. I'm here. Oh. Sorry, I'm here. Okay. So, Miss. Miss. Miss as a verb. know as a miss as a verb mm -hmm. when you how can I say in your own words as you understand that one of course yeah maybe it's more like a feeling I miss when I said maybe I miss
when you feel maybe awkward or sad or something when someone or something is gone? Very good. Yeah, that is a very good explanation of means. Nice. Now an example with that one. When you say I'm missing something. Okay, yeah. I'm missing something. Uh, yeah, actually, this is very common, man. I, I mean, you, you mm -hmm. can say something like, I miss having dinner with you on Fridays. That is with a general natural. I miss having dinner. Uh, we never say to have, right? So that would be. And when you say I'm missing something, is when maybe uh, when you don't remember, when you can't remember, or when you, or something like that. I'm missing mm. something. When I said I'm missing something, is when maybe that could be a, an example. Yeah, it's, it's another example that you can. I mean, this word can be used in the same context in different things. For example, when you say, mm -hmm. I miss the bus, it's not that you are yeah. sad because you, the, the bus gone away, but you, you wanted to be in that bus and, and you missed. Uh, so that is going to be miss as well. Okay. Good. Save. That is going to be for Heidi. Ah, that is right in there. Uh, here I am. Uh, can you repeat the word, please? Yeah, the word is save. Save. Ah, okay. Save is to... Um, to, to, to let seem for... To use it later? Um, yeah, I mean, you can save something for a later time, right? Very good. Okay. And uh, an example with that one? I save, um, well, I can think is of, on saving money. <laughs> okay, yeah. But, yeah. Um, or can it be save people too? Mm, save something for people, it might be. Save memories is also as possible. Mm -hmm. Save uh, something abstract is good. Uh, I like to save memories in pictures very good that is a good one i like to save memories in pictures very good saving money is so difficult in this country yeah things like that it's right? necessary. oh it's necessary but sometimes difficult maybe the problem is that we like to spend many things right i mean we want the best cell phone the best car but this is something we're going to actually discuss later on good thank you heidi uh detest that is for Jose Wilfredo. It's something like hate. Yeah, actually, this is more than hate, right? It's like, oh my goodness, I just can't see you, right? Something like that. What would yeah. be a good example with this one? I detest irritating people. Okay, that's a good one. I detest irritating people. Very good, perfect. Finish. That is also an easy one. Juan Miguel. Okay, teacher. What is to finish? Uh, to terminate something. Very good. An example with that. Okay. Uh, I won't do this task. Uh, Right now, I will finish uh, after uh, after lunch, maybe. Very good, perfect, very nice. Actually, this is a very common one. So if you can say, for example, I, uh, I finished organizing my class, for example. So organizing, that is, it should be a gerund. That is a must. Okay. Very good, perfect. 
Now, a pardon, Ana Claudia. Actually, we're going to clarify something because somebody was asking about that one. Sometimes what happens about pardon is that um, this is, this can be a noun or it could be a verb. I mean, a noun could be like an action of forgiving or being forgiven for an error or offense. For example, um, she pardoned for his sins, for example. Uh, in could be a verb that is also like forgive or excuse a person, error, or offense. Okay, so that will be it. Anyways, Ana Claudia, tell us about pardon and an example. Uh, I agree with your explanation. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what you say. <laughs> no, same. You know, your, people yes, used to say the same, the same. <laughs> uh -huh, yes, <laughs> I was not to say the same. Huh? No, that, that, that was the question, Heidi, May at the beginning. And you've been clarifying that, but pardon is, I associate it and understand it like uh, less impact in Spanish. It's like something like excuse or asking permission to allow me to uh, do something. That is how I understand pardon. Yeah, actually, that is the way that is used in, in the American English. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a little bit different in, in the British one, because in the, Brit oh. in the British one, it's like a synonym of forgive. I mean, somebody uh -huh. can tell you, pardon me, please pardon me. And if you're an American, you will say, uh, you have to tell me, forgive me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, but it's kind of, that is the explanation. Okay. Mm, can I say, I pardon offense coming from I, from how can i say i pardon no no no, no uh, excuse me i i pardon the offense you may would be in that way yeah actually that is a very good one I pardon the offense you made to me. Okay. Okay. Very good. Perfect. Last okay. one in this one is going to be stop. Uh, Marcus. Okay, stop. Um, for example, um, no, I stop uh, from doing that thing. Okay, I stopped doing that thing. Very good with the gerund. Very nice. And we know what is stop, right? When you stop something that you were doing and you don't want to do anymore. Very good. Do you have any questions with this verse? You need to remember some of those are not that common, like like dread, right? Some those verbs maybe you are not going to use, but avoid, dislike, forgive, um, celebrate, consider, enjoy, keep. Um, entail is kind of common, contemplate, escape, uh, risk, mine is very common, delay. You need to remember that whenever you use these verbs after that one, you can use either a noun or a gerund. Okay, that is the most important part. Um, any questions so far? Good. So we have uh, somebody wrote here. Let me just stop and redo. Okay. So verbs can be followed by nouns, gerunds, or at that clause. Do you remember? Uh, so these verbs can be followed by nouns, gerunds, or at that clause. So it can be for the first two and also at that clause. So we have some, the list is not that long here. Acknowledge, mention, admit, propose, anticipate, recall, appreciate, recollect, deny, report, imagine, suggest, mean, and understand. And below you will see there uh, the examples. I can in my living in that big house. So that is a, a, the other one that is in my, of course, in my living in that big. I can't imagine a purple unicorn in my yard that is with noun. And the other one, I can't imagine that he lied on purpose. So that is a that clause. Okay, so two ideas that are together with that. 
There is another example, understand. I understand French, so that is with noun. I understand fishing pretty well. Fishing, not to fish, never. To and the verb, always a gerund. And I understand that you would prefer to stay. That, that is a clause, okay? We're going to still continue focusing in the gerunds or uh, the, the noun. That is maybe the most common, but it's possible to use that with a, a, a clause. We're going to continue with the activity with this verse. So let's say, uh, Maria Alejandra, what is acknowledge? Uh -huh. um, when you admit or um admit you know I don't know I think that or Yeah, admit is similar or to recognize, right? Recognize something to happen. Okay, uh, an example with acknowledge. Uh, I acknowledge to practice more English or practice. Need practice more English. <laughs> okay, I acknowledge I need to practice more English. Very okay. good. You can say also I acknowledge that, that English is very important for life. Yo, yeah. so that is a a that clause. Okay. Or you can say I acknowledge learning English is very important. You can see, it's it's very easy. Piece of cake. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Roxana, mention is for you. Okay, let me see. I mention. Hey. Mention. Mention is when you try to talk about uh, some specific topic. Very good. That is to mention when you come with something that happened before or you read or something like that. Very good. An example would mention. Um, can I say, um, I mentioned um, that topic, the previous class? No. Okay. Yeah, you can say I mentioned the topic from the previous class. Very good. No, that topic. No, it's like a that clause. No. Ah, uh, but if you are going to use a that clause after the that clause, you have to use a subject and a verb. Okay, so yeah, you can I say mentioned I mentioned that that topic, the previous class. Okay, no. in that case, it's, it's possible. I mean, it's possible, but that is not a, that clause, but that is uh, like this, that, those. It's going to be different. It's the same okay. word, but it's correct. I mean, it's not a clause, but it's correct. I don't know if okay. it's clear what I was telling you. I mean, it, mm. when you... It's when a little you confused, use, but uh -huh. tell me. Yeah, when you use that as a clause, it's something like when you say... Um, I mentioned that he said before to come to class early, for example. So in that case, when you use a clause, you and the first part is going to be a sentence. A sentence means that it's going to come with a subject and a verb. And after mm -hmm. that, you are going to use a subject and a verb again. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that okay. is a that clause. So there are two sentences that are together with that. Maybe uh, I, I can say, 
uh, she mentioned the no she mentioned uh, the no let me think of course <laughs> uh, she mentioned um that her her parents was uh, traveling the previous uh, vacation and complete the that clause with um, same as my parents they uh, was traveling another in another place that is a clause very good the only thing is that it's not was because you say parents it has to be where but okay. the rest yeah, 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 yeah very good okay that is okay. that you. is a clause very well perfect thank you very much admit that is going to be for fernando sorry and admit <laughs> okay uh Admit. Admit is um, admit something. <laughs> now admit yes. Um, reconocer, teacher. To recognize. To recognize. To recognize something. To acknowledge in that case. Acknowledge. To recognize something. Okay. Okay. So what will be an example with that one? An example, okay. I admit to need practice more English. Very good. I admit I need to practice more English, right? Very good. The other one is propose. That is going to be for Marcus. Okay. Uh, I propose that we have to fix the car. Okay. Yeah, so that is a proposal, right? Something that you provide as an option. Very good. Anticipate, that is going to be for Heidi. Okay. Anticipate means to... Like to prevent a situation. Very good. So you prevent something by getting to know what might be happening as a consequence. Okay. An example would anticipate. Mm, let me think. Uh, I can't anticipate. Unfortunate events. Okay, I can anticipate unfortunate events. Very good. Recall that is going to be for uh, Ala is not possible. Giselle. Yes, teacher. Recall. Yeah. Recall. Um, maybe recall is a verb. Maybe when you. Um, when you remember something that happened in the past, like a memory. Like, like a memory, very good. That is to recall. So an example will recall your- mm -hmm. I still recall my, 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 I still recall my first job. Very good. I've, I still recall my first job. Very nice. That is a good one. Perfect. Thank the you. other one is uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, the other one is appreciate. Let's see. Um, Danny, appreciate. Uh, okay. Appreciate. Um, Appreciate is when you uh, give a value for something that someone else do for you or, or for something that 
Mm. Exactly. Very good. That is to appreciate. And uh, an example mm. with that one? Um, I, um, maybe it could be I appreciate that you that you could, could attend or something like that. <laughs> oh, very good. I appreciate I don't know, to come to, no, not to come, coming to oh, the yeah. class on time. That will be it. So <laughs> I appreciate that you are on time. So it's uh, with that clause, right? So it's possible. Perfect, thank you. The next one is recollect, Juan Miguel Brand. Uh, recollect, maybe uh, collect some things from several uh, places. Okay, yeah. very good, that is to recollect and uh, an okay. example with that. Okay. Uh, uh, after you do your, uh, your exam, I will recollect a place by place or seat by seat your tests. Very good, perfect. That is a good one. Nice. Deny. Uh, Jose Wilfredo, what is to deny? Deny is like maybe decline. Decline something. Very good. It's a good synonym. And uh, an example with that? I can deny an, um, an invitation for dinner. Very good. Me neither. I mean, if somebody <laughs> invite me, I will be there. <laughs> that yeah, is for sure. Definitely. It's a good thing, not only for the food, because also but for the, the social thing, right? It's a good thing. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Report. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Ana Claudia, report. Okay, report is like um, like uh, present. Okay, uh, like present. Like a uh, hand uh, in maybe speaking or written. Uh, a summarize, I understand, of something. Okay. That's or investigation or for or research, yeah. Most commonly used in television, right? Or 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 news for news in radio. It would be the same, yes, right? Yeah, definitely that would be the same verb. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, the example could be um, let's see. Mm -hmm. I mm, I will report I will report that using that let me check let me try I will report that he is drunk. <laughs> okay. Know, it's like, Very will, good. It's okay because I just wanted to add. I will report. Uh, how can I? Because uh, it some sounds like something direct, but I understand like in a, a work environment. Yeah, actually, that is that is good. Good enough. It's true. And also, it's uh, that clause. I will report that he is drunk. Definitely, oh, okay. that is something that is correctly. Oh, okay. Good, perfect. Thank you. Imagine, uh, Marcus. Not possible for Marcus. Okay. Uh, Roxanne. Sorry, sorry, teacher. Oh, okay. I, I was mute. Sorry. Okay, don't worry. Uh, uh, sorry. 
I remember that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I imagine that I get that joke. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Very good, perfect. That is a good one. Imagine everything that we can say in English. Roxanne suggest is for you. Suggest is when you uh, give some advice, maybe. Very good. An advice. An example with that one. Mm, let me see. Mm. I can't. I can suggest um, budging that type of cell phone. Very good. And that is with a gyron. Very nice. I suggest buying that cell phone. Very good. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mean. Fernando. What does mean mean? Mean. Mean. Uh, means, uh, means, mean. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> means, means. <laughs> uh, signify something. Signify yeah. of something. Yeah, to say exactly what are the words, right? So about something. Very good. Uh, an example with me. With me. Oh. Me, 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 me. I'm thinking. Okay. Okay. I I remember I I I listened a song with with that word, okay. and one line said uh, it was very mean of me. Okay. Uh, in that case, it's not a verb. It's like uh, an an adjective. Mean is like not. Not good, like a bad person. Not good. Right? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the word is the same as we discussed before. Some words are nouns, sometimes they are adjectives, sometimes they are like a verb. Um, so, for example, with mean, you can say, she meant coming to the party. So that would be as a verb. Mean. Yeah, mean. In the past, is meant, right? Okay. Good, perfect. And the last one is understand. Maria Alejandra, understand. I'm going to. When you comprehend uh, a topic or a different when you comprehend or when you know what the meaning of a uh, different It could for be words for a different okay. uh, topic. Very good. That is it, actually. Very good. So, an example with understand. With understand. I am. I understand uh, I understand I understand uh, the reason that you prefer to try a car compared with a, a moto or motorbike. Motor. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good, perfect. That is very good. Okay, some verbs, everybody, some verbs can be followed by a gerund or by infinitive. So some verbs can be together with any, with a verb uh, that is a gerund or with a verb that is an infinitive. When this is the case, the meaning of the two will be identical for some verbs, but different for other verbs. 
we're going to try to check that in the other classes, okay? But that is, that's why it's very important, this topic. This topic is very important because, I mean, as, as we were discussing in Keep Right uh, or Mind, do you remember? You cannot say, I uh, don't mind to go. Mm, I don't mind going. So that's what we need to, to try to remember when we're speaking. Because if you don't say correctly, people that only speak um, English, they won't understand. If you say something that is grammarly incorrect, they, they will be like, what? What is this that you're saying? Something like that. So we need to be very, very careful about this. Of course, um, this is like a, like a process, right? This is the first thing that you need to remember, that you need to identify. And little by little, we will be using that in a very normal way. And you will be able to just use it as all the English that we have learned. Good, do you I have, have a any- question. Go ahead. Yes. Can we identify uh, that verbs or just rem re yeah, remember? To remember. Uh, to yes. remember. We are going to work a little bit more in those things. It's not on the book, but I want you to be sure about these things. So I'm going to bring more about this topic. But at the end, that is what you need to do, to remember, to learn by heart, right? It's like when you were learning the simple past, the regular and the regular verbs. Mm -hmm. It's exactly mm -hmm. the same. It's exactly the same. But there are verbs that are more common than others. So those are the ones that you need to take care of first. The ones that are more common, like understand, like deny, like recall, like uh, acknowledge, admit. Those are very, very common. And you need to remember that whenever you're using that one, uh, you will be using a gerund or a noun after that one. Or also it's possible at that clause, okay? Okay. Good, good. Any other questions, my friends, before we finish? And now that everybody's here, almost everybody's here. Uh, so is there anybody that does not have access to the platform yet? Everybody has the access. Yes. Good. Yeah. Remember to, to do the exercise tonight. Also, there is a question for you to check into that one. And we are going to check the attendance. The 101 for today is for Ada Azucena Cáceres. So let's check attendance. Ada Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Danny Josue Garcia Martinez. Present, Mr. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present, teacher. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present, teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present, teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present, teacher. Good. Jose Marcos R Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be back with you, back in business in English. So uh, if you have questions, remember that you can chat with me directly or on the group. You can ask questions here. And uh, this uh, module, we will need to speak a little bit more, okay? So 
have a good night. Rest very well. Dream in English and see ya tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Good night, good night everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Hello, Ada. I don't know if it's possible for you to join. If not, I'm going to wait here. If you can, of course, it will be a pleasure. 